Well, folks, it's after seven o'clock, just barely. And I think it's time for us to get going. It looks like we have 18 people coming in via Zoom and we physically have nine here. There's an overlap of two or three there, but it's not bad for the meeting. And I'm sure we'll get a few more come in over time. Let me first ask, do we have any visitors tonight? Can't see the audience, so if you're waving your hand, speak up. But I think we're all there. Uh, and everyone here is uh, a member, I think. Ex-member, and you are? Jake Moore. Jake Moore, well, welcome here. Hope we'll, we'll see you again in the future. Uh, so this is pretty much the same. Our membership is up to 57. We've had one person join since last month. The Follow methods to follow are the same as we've seen in the past. Uh, so what's on the agenda tonight? Well, we have a few things business-wise to take care of and announcements. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the chat GBT app. Uh, we have a product review of Gary Whit Rosen's wigs Mac from MacMost's uh, app called Clip Tools that Nathan's going to be talking about. And then finally, Christian, is going to be what our feature speaker. And he has a lot of things to tell us about our iPhone and our iPad and how to make them easier to use. So the board, well, that picture should be pretty much, or pretty familiar with you. It's been the same, I think, for two years. <clears throat> Always looking, I will say, for someone to new blood to join. So keep that in mind for next year. Board meetings are always held on the first Wednesday afternoon of the month. So that sometimes puts us two weeks before the meeting and sometimes one, just depends on the month. So if you're ever interested in attending, we're doing them virtually right now, let us know and we'll get you so you can sign in. We have a number of appointed positions. Most of the people that were taking these positions last year have notified me that they're renewing again. Uh, as you see, there's only two at the bottom uh, that have I have not heard from. Uh, generally speaking, if you're interested in participating in some way with CatMac, let us know and we'll find a way to put you to work. As we have been doing for months now, <laughs> Uh, record our meetings. We saw the notice that Robert started at about seven o'clock. We have a library now of what, two year, three years worth of recorded meetings and they are available on our YouTube channel. It's a good way if you find someone that's interested in CapMac or potentially interested, send them directions to our YouTube channel. They can see what our meetings have been about. Or if you were simply needing to go back and refresh your memory of something someone said. I know I can't jot down notes enough about everything that's going on. So having that video library is very useful. Help desk we have during uh, the first half hour here. Uh, we don't record it, but if you have questions, I know there were some discussions going on on the Zoom side of things. I don't think we had any technical questions asked here locally tonight, but it's a good way to get your technical questions answered. Um, and if it's, there it is. There's that hunger. Somebody's got an open mind. Can't to go find it's some stuff. It's going to be a huge step in bringing this thing home for us. Um, so, um, <clears throat> if you have a technical question, and you can't come to the meeting itself, send mm -hmm. an email to the president at catmac.org and I'll get it to our help desk team. When I was or at my studio, uh, to measure a frame and this other picture fell off and hit me. Could uh, everybody and that's not talking mute themselves, please? Yeah, There's a lot of a background conversation going on. So if you have a technical question and you can't come to a meeting, send an email to president at catmac.org and I'll get it to the right people. Or you can also post it in our Slack channel. Coffee with CatMac, we've been doing for a while now, a daytime meeting. 
The next scheduled one is Wednesday, the 29th at 1130. We usually get between nine and 12 folks to show up and we talk about anything and everything. So if that's interested and you have the time available, please join us. That also leads into, do you have any tips to share? As with tonight, I'm going to share something. Nathan's going to share something. <clears throat> we are always looking for contributions from our members to talk about an app that they found that they think is particularly useful or a tip or anything they want to share with the rest of the members. You can be part of our program, whether you're here virtually or whether you're here physically. Let us know where we can put you into the list at a future meeting. News of interest is kind of short tonight. First of all, happy Pi Day to everyone. It is March the 13th, 3.14. So that has become a thing in the last few years. The STEM has become more of an important feature in general life. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share, and this is actually something that Koki sent to me earlier. Um, she had seen somewhere where a first generation iPhone fetched $63,000 at an auction. Of course, it was unopened in the original package, but still, you know, it's amazing what, what things are worth and you never know what you might have laying around your house. Uh, also, and I don't know if anyone's interested in this or not, but I had someone contact me and they said they had sick Mac classics that she was trying to find a good home for. And so if someone has an interest in one of those or all of them, let me know and I'll get you in touch with her. I'm sure she's ready to get things cleaned out. Let Peter know, because he works with yeah, I can do that, but we're talking about really old Macs here. You know, 80, 84 <laughs> classic Max. <clears throat> now, I, as she suggests here, Mac aquariums were a good uh, repurposing for it. But should anyone want to add to their, their historical Mac collection, here's an opportunity for you. Just let me know and I'll make you, put you in touch with them. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, some discounts that are available to Macintosh user group members. The list never changes from month to month. So if you've seen this once, you've seen it several, a couple of times now. And the way it works is if you're interested in pursuing this, let me know and I'll get you the code that is required to access and, and purchase it online at the discount. So tonight's program, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to talk a little bit about chat GBT, and then Nathan will talk about the uh, app that was the Jerry, Garrett, Gary Rosenberg, I, I can never pronounce his name, had organizations created, and then, of course, we'll have Christian to talk about all kinds of interesting things. So let, first, let me talk a little bit about ChatGPT. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have heard of it? We talked about it at the London Mac user group. So a lot of people have. And if you've been looking at the popular press, there have been tons of articles about it. So what is it? Well, I logged into it today and asked, what is it to itself? And this is the answer it gave me. So what it essentially is, is a artificial intelligence that allows you to interact via a chat access. So you type into the chat window as if you were typing a chat, make messages to someone, and it will generate a response. Now, sometimes it'll say, I don't know. Sometimes it'll give you an answer that's not entirely correct but it does a relatively good job and I'll give you a demonstration in a minute. So you can use it in a number of ways and the main discussion here is using an app. Now here's some verbiage about the app and what you can do and how you can use it and there's a lot of ways you can use it. Um, 
and a lot of ways you can try to use it. A lot of controversy is, is, surrounds this too because organizations have begun using chat GPT or similar AIs to write articles for them. So in the, on the web, news organizations, particularly technical news organizations, now will have articles that were written or at least partially written by these uh, bots. Um, ChatGPT was built by the organization called OpenAI, and I give the URL for it. You can also access ChatGPT to try it out without downloading the app by simply going to the website. And let me do that here. Okay. And so first thing you do, it'll come up and yes, I'm a human, at least most of the time. <laughs> and I can now log in. You do have to create an ID, but it's a free account. Um, hey, hey, John, are you trying to share your Safari window too? Because we just see the key. Oh, okay, window. I'll fix that. Because I want to see it. Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right. I know I can't get in to edit it. You got to deal that deal with that box. Now you can. There we go. <laughs> Forget password now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I really want to see it. So this is the basic interface you see. And it gives on the screen, you guys see this? Is it, did I share the chat GPT? Yeah, you did, you did great, we see it. Okay, perfect. So what you do now is there's some suggestions and I can come down here to the bottom and type in something. So for instance, So I, I type in, why is a Mac better than a PC? And so now you get an answer. Notice it gives you a very neutral answer. But the way it is, it is generated looks like there's someone on the other end typing it out. So there it is, blah, 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 blah. And you have an answer. And you can copy and paste this and use it elsewhere. You could say, oh, uh, I didn't try this one before. So you can ask it things like this. I said, summarize the novel War and Peace. <laughs> so it's going to spit out about a page worth of stuff. I had no idea if this would work because I haven't tried that one before. But so you could ask it things like that. You could say, give me a Give me a book review on something. Analyze a movie. Basically, you can type in a lot of things, but it doesn't know everything. So if I if I type in who's Nancy Gravely, it's okay. 
I don't know. I'm an AI. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm always misspelling it. No, I, but uh, but I type in Brian. If I do, who is Brian? Your Y N. Then it comes back and gives me an answer. Now I don't think it's correct. So it's, it's still saying he's vice president, but. You can ask it any kinds of questions like this. So there's a lot of things you can play around with it um, and just ask questions. All you need to do is to create your ID and go on the web, or you can download the local app if you want to have the, the, the app interface. The other thing that's happening is many different companies are commercializing this by including calls or hooks into uh, this particular chatbot and other similar ones to, to expand the capabilities of their own products. So you should see smarter applications able to give you better answers in the future. But <clears throat> I know Bill had sent me some information about chat GPT a few months ago. And now that there's an app, I thought it might be interesting to demonstrate it to you all. And that's pretty much all I have. It's free. Uh, John? <laughs> yes. John, I had uh, I found it interesting the other day. I was at the Mac shop and uh, one of the guys that um, he goes to college and he does some programming and stuff. And he was talking to me about using um, using this because he'd be working on a program or working in a class and there was a concept he wasn't real clear on or a, for programming or for some other thing he was working on. And he would ask chat GP for instructions or, or clarification and, and he was getting it as opposed to, you know, you hear these stories of them writing papers and stuff, but he was actually using it for a supplement to his uh, education. It was kind of interesting. And that's a good point. And I'll, I'll get, make another comment on that in a moment. But one of the things Robert mentioned there is a big thing that was going on earlier this year was universities and high schools having problems with their students using this tool to write papers for them. Because if you get something, you can say, expand on that. You know, give me more information. And it just keeps expanding the, what it's typing to you. So it can do a lot of different things. Let me I, stop that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's not always accurate. No. I, I've got a brother who's a, a well-known mountain climber around the world. So my other brother Googled on him. <laughs> and it got a lot of his climbing abilities right and then said he was a stunt man in hollywood and goes on about all this other stuff which <laughs> not to his knowledge um so it that that's kind of a, an interesting situation it is <laughs> but that's not mine the, the other thing that I've, I've read is you know and it's related you know we're um artwork is being created based on the style of artists and they're they're you know, it's kind of impacting their ability to make a living. And that one of the ways to try to, to confound that is artists will, they can load their artwork, but they will attribute it to a type of art that they don't do, like abstract, you know, art. So that when the, when the robot tries to put it together, they get it all confused because it's they don't do abstract art that sort of thing I, I don't know i think it's a very bizarre um there's a lot of difficulty with this automatic stuff i think it is and you're very right i uh, i in a prior exam mm -hmm. test i asked it what is cat mac and i tried it this afternoon it keeps telling kept telling me it was a food truck in Washington, D.C. But there might be a cat food truck. There is. There is. And then it went to something else. I, 
I couldn't remember exactly the wording I used. So the question you ask is very important to specify what you're asking for. Uh, the other thing is it. <laughs> No, oh, where am I at here? Okay, did that. So there's a lot, I gave you a list here of some other references you might wanna look at if you're interested in chat GPT. Uh, the first one there is actually a video that uh, uh, Gary Rosenzweig did. I hope I didn't get too bad off that time. Share your screen, but, please. But it, it, his was, how can you use chat GPT to learn things? And he went through six. Are, are you, are you, are we supposed to see oh, your screen? Sorry, I switched thing and forgot to go back and share it. The, the problem of not using your own computer. Okay. I'm gonna let, I'll let Jim drive because it's his computer. We have too many things to choose from in terms of the share. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, if you're interested, look at that video. It's about eight or 10 minutes long. And he lists or gives suggestions. And he actually he talks about each one and then demonstrates each one on how you can use it to learn new things or learn about things. And it's, you know, what are definitions for terms and so on and so forth along the lines that Robert mentioned earlier. So it can be used in a lot of different ways. In a way, you can think about it as a front end of the web because it's, it is going out and trying to pick information from uh, the web uh, or a lot of times Wikipedia and pull it in and give you an answer. <clears throat> But there's other articles there as well that you could read more about to learn something about J chat GPT. So I'm all finished with what I had to say. Does anyone have any questions before I turn this over to Nathan? I all think right. it's a good tip to use it for education because I get tired of looking at, at commercials on YouTube. <laughs> and so I think that's kind of a good way. Just ask it a question and see what what it comes up with, but always remember it may not be accurate. Absolutely. Is wrong. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to get, but it might give you the starting place to then research further. Um, but Sounds like Safari on steroids. Say again? Sounds like Safari on steroids. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to see more and more of this everywhere. To my well, knowledge, more, more search engines heard... are starting to use it. Say again? More search engines are starting to use it, like Bing. Yes, Bing. And the number of people using it since they've introduced this has uh, gone up significantly. Not that it's contending with Google, but it's still a significant increase. So we're going to see this technology. I, so, I just want to want to thank Don for reminding me it's Pi Day and he has a thing in the chat about a discount um, which is available right now. We just went to the store today and forgot to look and see if pies were half price, so I'm kicking myself. There are there are bakeries or coffee shops that do that during this, on today. You go onto the web and search for Pi Day deals to see what you find out. The Type Control Books is having a sale today. But it's the same discount that we get all normally, I think. All right, so thanks. I hope you were found that interest. I'm going to turn this over to Nathan now so you can talk. So let's start up with Nathan Sanford. We'll get to what Christian's turn. Somebody's mute was off. Nathan. All right, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, Nathan's turn. Yes. Yeah. All yes. Right. Well, where is he? <laughs> oh, here we go. So today I'm going to be talking about a menu bar app that you can get free in the Mac App Store called Clip Tools. 
this is a clipboard manager for, uh, but a lot more than that. So to start with, the Mac only comes with, when you copy and paste something on the Mac, you only have one item at a time to, to choose from. There are a lot of different apps that you can download that will give you a lot of different choices for more and more uh, clipboard items that you can just paste with. Unfortunately, this tool, Clip Tools, is Mac only. It does not work on iOS. So this is the, the tool in the top here uh, and in your menu bar. And you can see the first four items are items that I have copied and copied from the web or somewhere else. And I can just click on one and it pastes it into notes. And this is just uh, from Mozart's Wikipedia. Then, so that's one use of it. If you hold down different modifier keys, like option, you can save it. Or if you hold down control, you can copy it. If you hold down shift, that pastes it directly. If you hold down shift and option, that removes it. And then shift and control will paste it in plain text. So just play around with the different modifier keys to see what you can do with, with the different uh, clipboard items. Then you have where you can paste the date. So 3-14-23, or you can paste the time and that pastes it in year, month, day format with a, a 24 hour time, 1930.06. And you can also copy it by holding down control. And if you go into settings, you can ha adjust the paste date format. And these are all Unicode. And he has the directions for if you want um, different day, like the day coming first then the month and the year or a full year, or you can say, give me like when Tuesday, March 14th, or to, there are different formats for each one of these. And you can, uh, if you go into his directions, instructions and feedback, and you can see the, the different formats. So like year, 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 Y, 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 M, M, D, D is the full year, month and day. If you put ca all capital letters, E, 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 that becomes Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. So he has all, all these examples in there of how you can change that. Then Lorem, Lorem Ipsum are placeholders. So if you're doing a desktop publishing piece, you see this a lot in pages where if you go into like a a newsletter. This is all lorem ipsum. It's just nonsense characters that are placeholders for actual text. So you can make your own templates using uh, his built-in lorem ipsum, uh, classic paragraphs, titles, sentences, all the way to from one to a hundred paragraphs. Then there are smart clips. So if I were gonna go into numbers and I wanted to 
keep track, keep a time chart, for example, of when I start and stop an activity. So what I could do with these smart clips is I can add a new one and say, what job are you starting? And I want to put the time. So I'm going to put a bracket, date, colon, and then put in the, the time, the time <laughs> format that I want, which happens to be, uh, let's do H colon MM space A for like 3.59 PM. H colon MM space A and then close brackets. So when I, I paste that, I can say uh, cataloging apps. And then that, that was my smart, smart time. And then I've already created an end time one. So I can go into the next column, go to smart clips and do end. And if it were, if the time, I'm doing this fast, so it's the same time, but it, it shows my start and end time. So I could go through and, and put that down easily. So you could do time organization that way. That's one example of what you can use smart clips for. Another example is, this is, a, I found a little bit fiddly. It doesn't really work that well, it only works with the first two of the clips up here, but you can say, I want you to paste um, clip one and clip three. And it pasted clip one, but it did not paste clip three. I think it only works with the first two that I found. So that's kind of a limitation. Also, another limitation is that you see there's keyboard shortcuts, but according to him, and uh, the Mac API has a limit where this app has to be open in order to use the keyboard shortcuts. So I, I've created a universal keyboard shortcut of Control Option Control M to open up the app. Then you can do like Command Four to paste in that, that fourth clip. If you do that without it being open, it doesn't do anything. It has to, the app has to be open in order for this to work. Then there are calculations and he has a ton of different calculations you can do everything from scientific calculations from sines and cosines and all that to just your regular run of the mill calculations. You can also do like order of operations. So like four plus six times two divided by four, oops. Hit OK, and it gives me five. So you can paste calculations. You can calculate a selection. So if I had a selection of numbers, like that, and I selected it, Oh, maybe I have to I have to, I have to put in um, operate an operation. So let's do six times seven times nine times two equals
Well, I don't know why that's not working. Um, oh, there it is. Previous calculations, which it gives you the answer here. No, those are the, the pace. Anyway, moving on, there's a number stack. So you can put in these values. So you can clear that. Let's clear the stack and put in some new uh, collection of numbers. And and they, they have to be separated by commas. So let's do 24, 36, 75, 80, 24, 48, and 105. So there's seven values. There are seven in the stack. The sum of those numbers is 401. The mean is, or the middle, or the average, I guess, is 57.28, five, seven, blah, blah, blah. The median, the middle number is 89. And the mode, the one that occurs the most is 24. And you can sort it. So from least to greatest, alter it and, and clear it all out. Then if you have a, a selection of text, you can see stats on that. So there are 228 characters, 44 words. You can change the case, so make them all uppercase or lowercase or capitalize just the words or capitalize the sentences, capitalize lines. You can either even turn it upside down and backwards. If you have uh, numbers, you can convert them into words. We can remove extra spaces. You can encode or decode the uh, URLs from web pages. You can convert to an HTML. So it converts like a apostrophe into um, ampersand AMP and so on. And then you can sort those lines. It also has finally, uh, a, his website, macmost.com, his most recent tutorials on YouTube, his weekly newsletter. Like I said, great instructions and feedback. And he's done several videos on everything that's included in this and how to use everything. And finally, some of the basic settings, like maximum number of total clips. You can clear the clips. You can set up your global key uh, keyboard shortcut, which I said was Control Option Command M for me, and you can tell us to launch it, log in, and all of that. It's a free app available in the Mac App Store by Gary Rosenzweig, and I think that's all I have. One other thing with it is it's only available for the current version of Mac OS. Oh, okay. And like I said, it's a little fiddly. It, it doesn't work with um, in some ways that I expect it to, but it, it's, a, it's an interesting little tool. Thanks, Nathan. Sounds great. Hey, you want to go ahead and introduce Christian now? All right. So please welcome Christian Boyce, who will be talking us to us about how to get the the most out of and get make the iPad and iPhone work for us to make it easier to use. So please welcome Christian Boyce. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> well, as usual, it's always nice to be here. So um, today what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some, uh, some keynote slides. I'm going to do, of course, the usual thing I do is I do this stuff live. 
so you can, um, you know, it's more more dramatic that way, right? Because things can go wrong, and um, they will. And then I can show you how to get out of things going wrong. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to share my screen. I hope this works. We'll see. All right, let's let's share that one. Okay. And maybe we'll have some sound. You never know. All right, so <clears throat> our um, our talk today, today. Okay, now you see my screen. I hope. Yeah. Good. Is that a yes? That's a yes. Good. All right, so our, uh, today we're talking about making your iPhone and iPad easier to use. Okay, so focusing on things that are built in. You already have these things, but uh, we're going to use them better. So let's um, let's just see what's on the next slide. Not that it's going to be a surprise to me. I've done this before. All right. So first thing is, make, let's make it easier to see stuff. All right? It's always easier if things are bigger. So um, I have here an iPhone 14 Plus, which I'm going to show you. No, 14 Pro, and it's it's pretty big but I need to make the text bigger. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's talk about what we can do. I'm gonna talk about display zoom. So I'm gonna show you now, if I do this right, I'll be able to show you the slide and my iPhone, there it is. Okay, so let's talk about display zoom. Now, I when I go looking for something, I don't go like this and start looking around for it. I just pull down and search. Now there's more than one way to search, but I've gotta to get to the settings. Um, one way to do it is to hit that button down at the bottom that is, uh, that's above the dock. You can touch that and search. That's, that's a good way. But here's, here's the settings. So let me go to settings. Display zoom. Not every, not every iPhone can do this, but if yours can, you probably want to do it. So in the displays and brightness, scroll down. And down at the bottom, we have display zoom. Now, um, it's Mine is turned off right now. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on. And by the way, if there's questions, uh, if you think your question's really gonna be interesting to everybody, or maybe more than half, go ahead and blurt it out. Otherwise save it, we'll, we'll, we'll handle them at the end. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna to touch display zoom down there at the bottom. And what you get here are some examples of, of how it would look big and how it would look uh, normal. So the normal ones on the right, that's a default. And this is a, a sort of a generic there, uh, generic icon layout. Then we see generic um, notifications, and then we see generic text messaging. So if I just touch that larger one, and then tap done, it's just going to blow everything up a little bit. And for a moment, it's going to, it's going to, not exactly restart the whole phone. So I'm gonna tap where it says use zoom and we'll see it doesn't take long. It goes black and it should come back. Here it is. Okay, so now I'm using the bigger stuff. So you, you'll see even the labels down there where it says larger text and default, these are bigger than it used to be. So you look at the icons, the icons are a little chubbier. It's nice. So. Try it yourself. Uh, it's free. Why not? Okay. And it's um, it's not one of those things where when you make things too big, how it how it kind of messes up the layout of the phone. This doesn't this doesn't do that. So let's keep going. What else do we have? Oh, the control center. Okay. Well, control center. I'm using, of course, an iPhone 14 Pro here. Control center on this one. We get to by pulling down from the top right, from the top right ear, they call it. And look at this nice control center. Now, the default control center is just um, a few of these items, but I've added a, I've added a bunch. So I'm going to first show you the, the point of what, I'm, what I made in the slide here is about making text bigger. Then I'll show you how you get this into your control center. So the thing we're looking for is those double A's down there in the bottom right corner. When I touch that, a little hard to read the, um, the writing down there, but what it's, what it's telling us is, first of all, I can make the text bigger, smaller, right? That's, that's nice, just drag it around. But also, we can 
we can choose to make it bigger for everything, which is the way it is, all apps, or I can do it for the current app over here on the left, which is just the home screen right now. So I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm gonna leave it hopefully at 100%. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna jump out of there. And now I'm gonna show you how, how this kicks in and why this is so cool. Okay, so what the normal person does, let's talk about what, why I'm doing it this way. The normal person goes into settings, they find their settings, they go to display, they find text size here, they jack this way up like this, and they probably never change it again. And, and when you do this, the problem with this is now when you go to things like your mail, you can you barely read anything, right? It's, it's hard, there's only a couple words per, per email. Not good, not good. So, you know, maybe you made something big because you were on a web page. So let's suppose you're in Safari, and not Dafari, but Safari, and you know, whatever you're doing, you wanted to make this bigger. Well, it's big, all right, but um, I mean, you can barely read where it says Mac Rumors up there at the top. It's it's just boomers. So that's a bad way to go, really. So I'm gonna I'm gonna undo that. Let's go back to um, our settings. I'm gonna put this back to a more normal thing here, somewhere in the middle. Okay, but we still want to make it bigger. But we want to make it bigger when we want to make it bigger. That's a lot of that's a lot of action there to make something bigger. I mean, if I was if I was in the in the email, so I'm in the email and I want it bigger. If we did it the old way, we would leave the mail. We'd find the settings. How many taps is this? I'm already up to two. There's settings. There's three. Here's four. Here's five. Then I gotta get out of here. Here's six. And then I go find mail again. That's seven. That's a lot of clicks. So now that I've shown you how not how to do it let's never do it that way let's do it let's do it this other way so suppose i'm in the mail and i decide i need to make this bigger so that when i when i get emails from my friend sandra they seem to come in too small she's sending from uh, aol they come in small i want to make it bigger but i don't want to make my text messages too big all i want to do is make it bigger right now right here so i'm going to pull down from the top right corner and you see i have I haven't really left mail. I've got these double A's down here. And now I'm gonna say, let's make it bigger. And I'll say like this, but only for mail, okay? So now when I get out of there with a couple of taps, it's bigger, which is great. And if I went say to messages, messages looks normal, okay? So this is a really nice thing to do. I can, I can change it easily. You don't leave the app, you just drag down the control center, find your double A's and put it the way you want it and say for mail only, I'm gonna make it like that. So that means that you have now the option of setting uh, a size per app, right? With, if you do it the other way, you make everything big. They're all the same size. If you do it this way, you can make messages a certain size, you can make emails a certain size, whatever you want. So now we have to know how to, how to get those things into the control center. So now we're actually gonna to go to the, the settings. In the settings, you have, um, believe it or not, a whole section just for the control center. So let's touch it. First thing you need, it's gotta say access within, within apps. You need to be able to get to the control center without having to go back to the home screen. So, so we leave it like this. Uh, the home controls, this is up to you. This is for, for me to turn on and off my lights around here. So that's um, the second button there is not crucial. But now here's the controls. Usually what you see are, uh, I think the first, like four out of the first five there, or I think these are the ones that are standard like this. I think you would just see the top four. But I've gone down here and I've added some. So what you do is if, if you don't see text size, like you're not going to. Um, I'll just turn some of these off and you'll, I'm just making it back to normal now. Oh, camera I think is standard. Um, if we look at the control center now, there's a boring little control center, no double A's. So now I'll go to the control center and we're gonna add, I'm gonna add the, um, 
uh, the text size. Here it is. Just hit the plus next to it. It flies up there into the top section. So these are the things, these things down here where it says more controls. This is what you can, uh, what you get to choose from. I also like the Apple TV remote. You can use a, a remote on your on your iPhone. Very handy. Better than any of the real remotes they've had. I like this magnifier too when I need to look at something and make it bigger. Uh, that's a nice way to do it. And screen recordings just in case. Okay. So now if I pull down, you see I've got these other things. There's my remote down there on the bottom right. Here's my my um, uh, my text size. And if you want to rearrange the order, of course I can put text size way up at the top. You grab it with these little these little handles on the right. Okay, so now, now if I'm reading email, then it's too small. I pull down from the from here. There's my double A's. For mail only, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And there I'm done. Okay, nice. Okay, so control center. I love the control center, as you can't tell. Widgets. Oh, let's talk widgets. Well, when you look at my iPhone here, these, my, my phone doesn't look like a normal iPhone because I don't have this. This is what's normal, right? This is what we're used to. But I've got these big things up here, big targets. These things are, are easy for me to hit. I, I use them all the time. I've got a, a calendar at the upper left. Not only is it the calendar, but I can actually see what's next on my agenda without opening the calendar. It's already there. I can see it. I can see the weather in Santa Monica. There's a flood watch, unbelievably. Um, it's still raining, been raining ever since the meeting started. Down below here, I have uh, my to-do list, which is right in front of me. And over here, I have a, a, a picture that is that pops up at random. And I've got the giant clock. So all of these are standard and free, except for the giant clock it comes from a, an app called Widget Smith. But the point is that these things, besides saving me time, I don't have to touch anything to see what the weather is. I don't have to touch anything to see when my next appointment is. I don't even need to see any, touch anything to see what's on my to-do list. But if I decide I want to, I just tap it. So if I touch the, uh, the calendar up there where it says Tuesday the 14th, that's as good as touching the, um, the calendar app itself. So, it's just, you know, I know it takes up a little extra room, but, you know, it's easier for me to touch it. And these are the, these are the key things for me. So here's my to-do list. It's a little long. Here's uh, the weather. It's all bad news. There's rain coming down. I think you can probably see that. And anyway, back to the calendar. So, so widgets are nice. Now, how do you get widgets? Okay. Well, widgets you get by... You got to make your put your phone into the wiggle mode. So I'm going to put I'm going to put my finger basically anywhere on the screen. Hold it until things start to wiggle. I'm holding, holding, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There it is. And on on an iPhone without a home button, you see a plus in the upper left. The iPhone with a home button, it's it, it'll be on the upper right for some reason. You hit the plus, and you can scroll through here and you see different widgets that they. Um, that are sort of suggested to you. But then once you get rolling here, these are widgets, these are apps that can include a widget. So you don't go to the app store looking for widgets. That, that's not how it works. You, you go to the app store and you look for apps and the apps include widgets. So that calendar widget that was on the home page on, on my first screen, that comes from the calendar. If I touch the calendar, they show me different kind of widgets I might have. So in fact, this is the one I'm using, but if we move over, here's a bigger widget, shows a little bit more. Here's one that shows a lot more. Here's just the month if you need it, and here's something that takes up a lot of room, and there you are. So whichever one you like, you're probably tempted to touch the one you like, but actually you have to hit the big button at the bottom that says add widget. So let's just say, let's say I wanted to add a widget. Um, I'm not going to add one on this first page. I'm going to add a, a widget here. The reason I'm not going to add it on the first page is when you add one, it always adds it at the top left. It's going to mess up my beautiful display here. This is the way I like it. So um, I'm going to mess up this screen. So we put our finger on here until it wiggles. Okay, we get into wiggle mode. I hit the plus, and I'm going to put uh, a widget here. 
and we'll, maybe I'll put a widget that has to do with um, the clock. So when I touch the clock, I don't need a clock like this, but I do need a clock with um, four times on it. I'm going to know what time it is for my friends in Texas, my friends in New York, and I know what time it is here. I don't know what the third one will be, but if I do this, see these are these look nice. So I'm going to add a widget, and there it is. Okay, and so it's a big thing to touch. And here's what's fun about this. Yes, I can con I can configure this, put my finger on it, hold it till it wiggles, and then I can edit the widget and put in these different times. But that that's important. But the point is that since this this widget came from the clock, if I tap it, I get all the clock stuff. Okay, this is the same old clock app that you would have had if if you just went and found that tiny little clock wherever it is. Oh, there it is. I see it. You see in the in the second row here, I've got this little clock. It's way easier to hit the big one. So anyway, bigger things are easier to touch. They're easier to remember. So that's why we do widgets. Okay, Safari Reader View. Oh my gosh, my favorite thing. If it wasn't for widgets, this would be my favorite thing. Let's go to Safari. So I'm gonna look for Safari. And here's here's an article from uh, Mac Rumors. Not a bad article, um, but I can make it easier to read. So how do we do this? Well, there's, there's a couple ways. The first way I'm gonna do it is in the upper left corner, you see double A's. If I touch that and let go, I have this option to show the reader view. When I hit that, now it's just, it's just great for reading. It's bigger, it's clearer, the ads are gone. Boy, that's nice. Okay, I can even configure that because you see they've made those double A's sort of reversed now, white on black. If I touch that, I've got control here to make things uh, bigger, smaller. So I'll, I'll make it a little bit smaller. And um, I'll also, uh, maybe I'll do it with a, a white background like that, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so it's all up to you and, and it's nice. Now that's, that is nice, that's a reader view. But, um, we're gonna do something else. So if I if I tap it again and I hide the reader, here's how we how it was when we came in. So what I showed you was great, but it took two taps. Uh, first tap is you had to get up here and tap the double A, and then you had to tap show reader. But it turns out there's a better way. I'm gonna show you this. Um, what you do is you touch and hold on those double A's, and presto, it's reader mode. Ooh. Okay, now maybe you already knew that one. I didn't know it until last week. So I think it's terrific. So I was always been a big fan of the reader view, but now I'm really a big fan. Let me show you another example. Let's go to another website. I'm gonna go to um, the LA Times. Okay, so here's the LA Times. And I'm gonna read this story about the floods. And you see, I automatically went to the reader view. How did he do that? Well because what I did here is I, I've told my phone already up here to always go to the reader view. And you see, can you see where it says um, website settings down below the fonts? I'm gonna touch that and I'm gonna tell it, uh, use reader automatically. So for the LA Times, which is full of ads, really hard to read. I'm going to use, I'm always have it do reader. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off just now so you can see what it would look like otherwise. Uh, I'm going to turn off the content blockers too. But here we go. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this page again. First of all, I can't really get into it because uh, you have to have a subscription. But if I, if I tell it, no, 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 give me the reader view, I can read it, which is probably going to, go to jail for this but um you, you don't need a subscription to do this okay so that's kind of cool but i am going to touch it and say website settings i always want to go to the reader view if they can and so now if i um if i go back if i go back to that first first page here no matter which article i pick i'll touch this one and it automatically reader views so this is on a website by website basis, but it remembers this forever, right? So if you say for LA Times, this is what I want, or for some other website, that's gonna remember. Okay, and of course, enlarging text, 
if you're if if you don't want to use a reader view, if that's not your bag, let's say you um, let's say I'll go back to Mac Rumors. Let's go to Mac Rumors here. Here we go. Okay, so you know you, if you want to read it the way they lay it out, that's fine. But um, you can you can still jack up the size by hitting those double A's. Now, why can't I do the reader? Because the reader only works when there's only one story on the page. Here we've got a story. Here's another story. Here's another story. So what you have to do, you have to be looking at, at a, a page that just has one story. Now, this just has one story. If I want to just read it a little bit bigger, I can hit those double A's and jack it up a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. I can. Uh, it worked. But um, I'd rather use the reader view if I could. But ah, do you see? You see, I can't use the reader view because because it's grayed out. It's grayed out because they haven't made their web page, um, their website um, conducive to readers. So that's that's too bad. But if you can use it, use it. Okay. Enough about the reader. Okay. Oh, speak selection. Oh my goodness. Okay. Supposing, supposing we go back to um, the LA Times. And I want to read this article about the levees that are flooding. Okay. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to show you how to read a text message with out loud rather than uh, a web page, but that's just because it's a little easier to demo. All right. So supposing um, I've got this, uh, I've got a a customer named Diana, and she's sending me, she's got something she needs me to read. And I, let's say I'm, I'm in the car, I can't look, or maybe this is quite a bit longer. I'm going to touch this and hold it until it pops. And then you see at the bottom, I've got speak. Now, when I do this, it might, I hope you'll hear it. We'll hear, let's see. Just had my 1245 Zoom rescheduled from New York to 115 mu time. Work Zoom. So I am available now or after three o'clock. What do you prefer? Okay, did you, were you able to hear that? Yes, cool. Now, how did we do that? Well, you can't do it unless you do something else first. So let's go do that something else. If you go to the settings, go to settings here. Um, you probably can guess that that's somewhere in accessibility, which it is. Um, I believe it's in spoken content, but this gives me a chance to show you something else. When you're in, when you're in settings, you've got to search up at the top. So I'm going to ask it to help me find speak uh, selection. Here it is, speak selection. How nice! And they take me right to that place. So the part that I'm doing here is that is the option at the top, speak selection. Without that turned on, that speak option isn't available. So this is if it's, normally it's off. It's off for most people right out of the box, but you turn it on and you got something there, okay? Uh, speak screen, the second one down is interesting too. It's a difficult move. Swipe down with two fingers from the top to hear the content of the screen. Well, okay, so we're gonna try that. We're gonna try that. We're gonna go back to our Safari. And here's the story I want to have read to me, maybe while I'm, I'm washing dishes or something or making dinner. So I'm gonna take two fingers here. I'm gonna put it up at the top of the screen, not in the corner, but like right in the, the top center and pull down and here we go. If I do it right, uh, there we go. The levee breach that left an entire California town underwater this weekend is putting a spotlight on how the state's vital flood control infrastructure is being weakened by age, drought, climate. So I can pause it. I can speed it up. You see where it says 1x. I can read that faster. I can go all the way around. It goes twice as fast, and then it goes slower. Um, we can jump forward and back. Uh, also, if you wait long enough, this, this black box collapses, as you just saw. Tap it again, and it comes back. If you're all done with it, you can hit the x. But the point is, I could, I could let this thing read. Basically, it's, it's an audio book. Okay, so if you have, if you go to one of the websites that has a lot of text, like the Project Gutenberg stuff, you can, you can have it read out loud to you. You don't have to have an Audible account to do that. Okay, so sometimes listening is easier than reading. And so that's, you know, that's uh, making it easier. All right.
what's next? Oh, it's a blue screen. Well, that just means we're switching to something else. So let's make typing easier. Oh my gosh, typing is tough. I mean, it's, it's a miracle that we can do this at all. But the, the thing to do is to make sure that you pay attention to the suggestions that they're giving you. So I'm gonna try to type a little bit here. Like I'm gonna, I'm trying to write, um, I'm gonna write a letter uh, to my mom, all right? So here we go. So dear, I type M, O, M. Okay, they don't know what, what that's gonna be, but I'm gonna hit the return here. Um, I'll say today, you see there's already an I there. So I'm not gonna look for the I to type it. I'm just gonna tap it. Today I was thinking of you. You see, so I didn't type anything. So uh, they try to guess what's the most the most likely bunch of words that you you might string together. So this is AI too, right? This is not Chat GPT, but it's AI. They're 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 not just giving you words based on what you typed. They're they're giving you words based on what the sentence is saying. So I'm going to tell her uh, I drove. See, I'm not going to correct that. I'm going to let them correct it. To, I'm going to start typing Malibu and see if they know Malibu. There's Malibu. So they're going to capitalize it for me because I'm just going to, I'm going to touch it if I do it right. Um, not the way I'm doing it now. There, there's Malibu. Um, and saw the uh, waves. So I don't have to type very much. So type less. Okay, type less. Uh, look for those suggestions. Okay, it's going to turn out turn out better for you. They're faster than we are. All right, now um, let's say let's say you want to type uh, you want to type something that's oh I don't know. Let's say it's uh, you decide to go get a job. You're going to need a resume. Okay, so you say I need a. You start doing res now. You know resume. I don't want to resume. That's no good. I want a resume. So, so I need that E to be accented. So if I put my finger on the E and I hold it, there's the accents. I'll say, I'll just slide over to that one. Okay. Got a resume. Oh, I needed two e accents. Well, I guess I haven't used a resume in a while, but, um, you know, same thing with, you know, you want to, you want to write, uh, you know, you, you want to write something in Spanish. If you want to say um, ole, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get the E, and I'm going to do this, and I'm get my exclamation point. But if we were really good, we would have put an upside down exclamation point at the front, right? So I'm going to tap over there, and now I'm going to put my finger on the exclamation point that's showing, and they're going to show me the upside down one too. Okay, so now you can type good Spanish which is nice. Um, there's a whole bunch of extra characters in here and you find them by, uh, by experimenting. You put your finger on things and stuff happens. Like, like here, I'm gonna put my lit on this letter C. There's all these crazy C's in case you wanna you know, type to your uh, Croatian friends. And even when you're, when you're trying to put in things like dollar signs, you hold the dollar and look at all these other uh, money units. So, you know, if you want to do, if you want to say something with so many, so many pounds, so many euros, so many, so many cents, you can do all those things. Okay. So rather than hunt around, like in here, you can go in here and look around and find those, those extra um, symbols. But why bother when, when they're all right here underneath the dollar? So I'm going to say, uh, if something was 49 cents, I'm going to put my finger on the dollar sign, hold it, slide up to cents, and I'm done. Okay. So lots of fun stuff under there. Now, if you're using an iPad, it's another story. In some cases, you'll just you'll see secondary letters across the top of the keys. You can sometimes put your finger on it and wait, and the secondary character will show up, and you can pick it. Other times, you can flick down, and it'll it'll get those characters. I can't show you on an iPhone because the iPhone doesn't have that. All right, so forward. Oh my gosh! Supposing you want to send an email to somebody. And or you, you just want to tell somebody here's my email here's an email address so you I'm gonna say uh, here's you know Joe 
and I'm gonna do the at, uh, let's say cap Mac. Now, um, if I do this here, look for dot, all I get is a dot, okay? I don't get dot com here because this field is not a, a field that's expecting a, um, an email address. But if, you, if you're up here in a, in a field that does expect an email address, then it gets easy. And you'll see, I got the, I've got the, um, the at down there. So I'm gonna do, I'll do Joe at, uh, you know, I'll just say A, B, C. Now I wanna do dot .com, but I don't wanna do dot .com. I'm just gonna to touch the dot, hold the dot, and there's all those options for me. And dot .com, I can just let go, and it just squirts it in. But if it wasn't dot .com, I could just go dot and slid over to dot .net, and there it is. So, you know, it's three characters. It's not that big a deal, but you got three for, well, you got four for one here. You got the period, and you got the extension, and you didn't make a typo. It's not that you don't know how to do it. It's just that it's, it's easy to make typos, so let them help you. And then lastly, um, I think, if you turn this, this, the phone sideways, you see how the keys got bigger. I, it, I'm not really showing you a very good view of it. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, I got a landscape phone here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I think I've got a landscape. Well, you can see, you can just see in my phone there, it got bigger. Those letters are bigger. So when you go sideways, they're bigger. So try it. It's, um, no, here we go. Let's just try this one here. Okay. Yeah, so look, um, these letters, no fiddle dee dee. I can't get my phone to behave, but it's it's somewhere in there. You see, they, they got bigger and then they got smaller. Okay, well, fun time's over. We'll go back to where we were. All right. So, okay, so back to this. So that is a nice way, though, to get yourself a bigger target is by turning it sideways. All right, next. What's next? Oh, trackpad mode. Holy cow. All right, suppose you're, you're typing away like this and now um, I want to, suppose I wanted to, to insert some text after the word you in that first sentence. Well, it is hard to take a fat finger and, and hit the perfect spot, especially if the text isn't blown up like mine. So the easy way to do it is, I mean, you can try, you can go down here and try to stab it and try to get there, but it's hard. So what you do is you go into what's called trackpad mode. You put your finger on the space bar and you hold it. And all of a sudden, all the keys disappeared. But now as I drag my finger around on the key on the, on the keyboard, I'm dragging the cursor with me, right? You see it's up here, it's down here, it's right next to where I want it to be. And then I can let go and there it is. Okay, so that trackpad mode is really cool. Anywhere that you can type, you can, uh, you can access that. So it's just put your finger on the space bar, hold it down, watch the keys disappear, and then move the cursor around by dragging your finger around on the keys. You can't see me dragging my fingers down there on the keys, but that's where I'm doing it. I'm not dragging it up there in the white part, I'm dragging it down here in the gray part, but the cursor's following me wherever I go, okay? Trackpad mode. Oh, and last but not least, holy mackerel, let's do this. Let's dictate. I'm going to clean this all up here. Okay. So dictation. Just about any time you see a keyboard, you're going to see a microphone down there. So this, this microphone is, uh, is very good. You, you tap it, and it'll, it'll listen to you. So I'm going, to, I'm going to write that letter to mom again. Dear mom, new paragraph. Today it was raining like crazy and I stayed in, period. I'm gonna to go to Malibu tomorrow, period. All right, so that's pretty darn good. I know you were wondering when I said, dear mom, it said your mom at first, but they fixed it. So how do they know? It's AI, okay? So this is pretty good stuff. Um, it does some things that I don't like, like it says gonna when I mean going to. So I'm going to just type that over. That's not me. That's that's crowdsourced actually. But anyway, still dictation is great. Do you notice that I said new paragraph? It jumped down. Uh, if I said new line, it wouldn't leave the double gap 
there. Uh, and, if I, and if I want a comma, I say comma. If I want a period, I say period. So if you, uh, if you were a doctor once upon a time and you dictated notes, this is, this is what you want to do. You'd be great at this. And if you're, um, even if you're not, you'll get great at this pretty soon. It's, it's awfully fast. So I, I do a lot, of, a lot of dictation much faster. Okay, let's go next. So, so we're basically typing faster by typing less. We're dictating and we're taking suggestions. Okay, and now, of course, um, sometimes you wanna do stuff on your phone and you don't need to monkey around to go find it. So I, I know I could set a timer. I could go here. I could find the clock. I go to the clock. I could go down here to the timer. I could set it for five minutes and say start. I could do that. But you know, any, any number I want. But I can also use Siri to do it. So I'm going to do it. Um, in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press the side button here and hold it down. This is the other trick with Siri. Is you want to hold it down until you're done talking and then let go. So set a timer for five minutes. So it's doing it. Change it to three minutes. Okay, so you can see it's done it. So I said it, and it knew that I was referring to the last thing that we just talked about was the, was the, uh, the timer. So this is one way to do it, not a bad way to do it. Okay, now I'm gonna ask Siri again. I'm gonna say, when's my next appointment? Oh, I've got it. And this is there. They know this is going on right now. So we're, we're, there we are. My next appointment's right there. Um, let's see what else we've got. Oh, well, I can look out the window, but what's the weather like? Okay. You can see it's cloudy and it's raining and um, I'll make this a little louder so we can hear it next time. But it said this out loud. I'll try this again. What's the weather like? It's currently raining at 56 degrees. Okay. You notice, by the way, to, to get the sound for Siri, I had to wait till there was a Siri thing happening and then adjust the sound. Um, otherwise, if I just ran it up without Siri on, it it would not have, it didn't kick in. Okay, so that's nice. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, if I wanted to call my friend Athena, I can do that too. Now, I don't have to touch it either. I mean, I could say, you know, you know the magic words, right? It's, hey, you know who, right? So I'm going to say, hey, Siri, and I can say call Athena. So here I go. I'm going to try, um, hey, Siri, call Athena. So hands free. Calling Athena Paris. So now it's calling oh. Athena. I better hang it up, okay? But so that's kind of cool. Um, let's see what else we've got on the list. Oh, okay. Hey, Siri, launch the calculator. I can't find any TVs to open apps nearby. What? Launch the calculator. There it is. Okay. Sold her twice. So here's the calculator. That's nice. Oh, my other favorite. Well, wake me up at 2.30. That's a nice time to wake up, isn't it? Um, however, uh, that's not what I need to wake up. I need to actually wake up tomorrow at uh, 4.35. So here I go. I'm going to say, wake me up at 4.35 every day. Your 4.35 a.m. alarm is already on. Oh, already had it. Okay. But you can see how easy that is. Again, I'm not digging around doing, you know, doing any of the work. I'm basically not even touching the phone. Now, this is one of my favorite ones is to um, not have uh, timers and things and reminders that are uh, for, for certain times or certain days, but certain locations. So let's say you are you're out and you realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to take my pill. Your pills are at home. So what you can do is you can tell your phone to remind you to take your pill when you get home. And it knows where you live because you, oh, there's our timer. You, it knows where you live because you put your information in, in the address book, right? In the contacts. So it's really great to do that. And so I do, I do things like that sort of in a different way. Like when, I, when I'm going up to my mom's house, um, there's certain projects I want to do there. And I can just tell it, remind me to do such and such when I, when I get to mom's house. But I'll do one here. I'll, uh, it, I'll also say, you can say, remind me to do something when I leave. So I'm going to say, um, remind me to bring my umbrella when I leave here. 
Okay, I added it. And so that's my address, 1813 9th Street. They know when I leave, if I get down the stairs, it's going to pop up a reminder to say, bring your umbrella, you big dummy. So um, it won't say that last part, but it's still. Okay, now look, here's another thing I can do. Here's, I don't want to go to TV Guide or go online to figure out when the Longhorns play. I know they're playing basketball tomorrow or the next day. So I can say, when do the Longhorns play next? Texas battles Colgate in the first round on Thursday at 4.25 p.m. How nice is that? It even shows me the TV station. So, so use Siri. If you, you know, a lot of people say, I don't like Siri. I don't get along with Siri. She doesn't like me. I don't like her. But give her another chance because she's better all the time. Okay, let's see who's next. Odds and ends. Oh my gosh, this is, this is the grab bag. This is, uh, wow. This is 15 years of iPhoning um, uh, all in, in one slide. All right, so let's say you're using your, your phone and we know how the camera app works. This is fine, let me take pictures. But if you turn it sideways, I'm gonna turn mine sideways this way. It's a little hard for you to see, but, but the volume buttons will take pictures. So you can hold it here, look at me, don't look at the screen. You, look at, you can hold it like this and take a picture and it, um, it's a lot easier to take a picture that way instead of what the normal way. The normal way is people hold the phone up like this and they're, they kind of stab at it with their finger. But when you hit it, you shake it. That's no good. If you're holding it sideways like so, it feels like, like a, a real camera and you can just squeeze it. Okay. So learn to do that. Okay. Now this is it. This is, this is, this is the money. This is where... You get your money's worth with this one tip and the rest of the night is free. So let's say I'm in the mail and then I get a text message. Okay, text message comes in and I'm doing this. Now I gotta go back to, back to the mail. What do we do? What do we always do? We swipe up, right? There's that black line down there. We swipe up, we go find the mail again. We swipe up, we go back to text messages again. No, not anymore. Now what we do is we take that black line and we push it this way, okay, left and right. So if I go this way, we're gonna walk through all the apps that I've used lately in the order that I use them. So this is nice, okay? I can just go back and forth like this. And in fact, if I'm switching back and forth between messages, if I'm in messages, then I go to mail and then I, I do it again, back to messages, back. And so I can just do this all, all day long. Very nice, you saved yourself at least one swipe, especially if the app isn't easily found on the front, on the first screen. What if that app is many screens over and you have to go climb around to go find it? It's way better than this. You don't wanna do this and then paw through these things and find what you want. Just swipe, just gotta put your finger right on that black line down there at the very bottom. But if you do it, this works. In fact, not only does it work there, it even works here, but you still put your finger down where, you, where the black line would have been on your home screen and you can still do something. Here I had the camera up. Uh, suppose it was here, suppose I leave it on this LA Times article and I get back here again, I can still pull over and there's the LA Times article again. Right, so I've cut your work in half, right? You should be twice as fast now. Okay, um, you, if, you, if you're texting somebody and you decide you wanna FaceTime them instead, up there in the top corner, you see a FaceTime icon, you can touch that and, and right away you're FaceTiming them. That's easier than going to find the FaceTime app and then creating a new FaceTime, blah, blah. This, is, this comes right out of, right out of um, uh, the Messages app. You're, you're already there, let's do it. Okay, Face ID. Now, if there's one thing I don't like, it's Face ID because I like the Touch ID, I miss it. Face ID, is um, I don't like to have to look so straight at it because with Touch ID, I could, I could hold the phone way out here and unlock it. Now I've got to be looking right at it. Well, let's make it as easy as we can for, the, for it to recognize your face. So I'm going to settings here. I'm going to go to uh, look for face. Okay, so here's face ID and authentication. And I can tell it that I don't want to require attention for face ID. If you turn that on, it certainly makes it harder for a fake face to open up your phone um, 
or for you to open it up by mistake, but it also makes it easier for you to open up when you want to. So instead of having to, you know, stare right at it, you can um, you can be off a little bit. And so um, this is this is a good one to turn off. Okay, I don't think you, you're going to be at, at risk. There's you don't look like you know not a lot of people look just like you, so you're probably going to be good. Oh, this one. Holy cow. You go to search for mail. How many people do this? You, you, you decide you're going to search for a piece of email. You go up here to the top. I'm going to look for um, a letter from uh, my friend Sandra again. And I do this. I'm going to make this a little smaller so we can see. I'm going to use my double A here. Take this back down to sort of a normal size. Okay. So I did the search, right? I, I typed in Sandra. I found two whole things. That can't be right. Can it be right? This is a good friend of mine. What's wrong here? Well, what's wrong is I never hit the search button. They gave me these two searches and everybody thinks that we should stop there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this blue search button and I'm gonna find a gazillion things that are you know, from Sandra to Sandra. That's the way to do it. So don't forget when you do a search, you know, if I look for my mom here, if I look for mom, I find two whole letters. No, 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 hit search. And now you find a gazillion, okay? That's the way to do it. All right. Happens every day someone asks me about that, I swear. Okay, and that wraps it up for me. I hope uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you got questions, I've got answers. Yeah, I, I had trouble understanding how you got the big window there for a calendar. I had trouble adding okay. a big big widget like that. The widget, so... Um, Let's let me find a place to add it. So I mean, I did add a big widget of notes. So something okay. about it worked. Way. Okay, what you do is is we we put our finger on anything on the screen to make it get into wiggle mode. Keep holding it; it's wiggling. I hit the plus. Now we're looking at widgets. So I'm going to go down here and find the calendar. And of the calendar, I'm going to pick. I like this particular kind. This is what I had before, but maybe I'll add I'll add this one. So I don't touch this. You can touch this all day long. You got to hit the, where it says add widget. You got to do that. So I'm going to add the widget and there it is. Oh. And, and it, it can be dragged around, right? I can move it like an icon, but I'll leave it at the top here. But the, the mistake we all make, I mean, I still do it all the time is we don't hit the blue, we don't hit the button that says yeah. that. That's exactly my mistake. But how did you get the double A thing where you could zoom in on different apps? Ah, that's a great one. That's in the control center. So, so in the settings, you go to the control center, which is uh, in the top. It's at the top level of of settings, and it's right up here next to general. So, control center. We scrolled down. We found that the double A thing was was in this list where it said more controls. And we hit the green plus to jack it up there into the upper section. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you do that one more time? I was looking at my phone. Okay, so we're in the control center, right? Did you get there? It says access within apps. Okay, uh -oh. good. Now scroll down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see text size. So you tap it, you hit the green plus next to it. It goes into the upper section. And those are the ones that show in- your I think I've already added it to the control center. Okay. So maybe that's so why. I so can't now read let's it. say let's say you go to your you go to the mail, for example, right? Let's go to the mail and um, and then if you now let's access the control center by pulling down from the top right corner, and then find your double A. Ah, so you can go up and down. Yep. So whenever you're in an app, you can um just go to double A and and do that. That's correct. And then you, but you get to tell it whether you're doing it for this app or for all apps. It's ah, like, I see. This app. You see on the left, you want to be over there on the left. On the, where, and you see at the bottom, I've got mail only or all apps, right? So you have to be in mail when you do that uh, in order to get mail only. Right now, I've got options for home screen only or all apps. That's because that's because you're on the home I'm screen. I'm not in something. Got right. it. Now, when you go to mail, you get to do it again. You go to messages, you get to do it again. And, and you can fine tune all of these and get them just the way you want them. Okay, okay the, re the read only thing in Safari. Um, I, I, yes. That didn't work for me either. Okay, you gotta, it has to be an article. First of all, it has to be something that that looks like an article. It can't be, for example, wow. a, um, a page. Like if, let's suppose I go to, uh, 
Well, let's go to my webpage, all right? Let me go to christianvoice.com. Okay, and here's, here's christianvoice.com. And there's a lot of articles here. Okay, this is a bunch of calendars that I've made. But suppose we want to... Um, we want to get a calendar here. We want to read about the March Madness calendar. So I, I right here, reader is gray, right? Because there's not a single story here. There's multiple stories here. So now I'm going to go to one of these stories. And now that I'm reading one of these stories, this is when I can go reader mode. So I'm going to, I'm going to tap up there on the double A and you see it says show reader. Mm -hmm. now, not every web page can do this. Um, so I'm going to say show reader, and now it's a whole different, clean look, easy to read, et cetera. So uh, when you make when you make a web page, you have the option to make it sort of reader friendly, and so that's what I did. But then lots of web pages do, but but there are a lot of web pages that don't. So you um, you have to experiment. But remember, it's only on it's only on something that would have been a single article. So like the front page of the LA Times is a terrible example that it can't do it can't find one article. But once you read one article, that article could maybe be uh, uh, reader mode. So I already do have a subscription to the New York Times, but if I go into the New York Times app, then I just I use whatever they have. Right. That's right. It okay. is only for Safari. So I you're, get it. if you're on New York Times app, you get it the way they want to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's very helpful. Thank you. A lot of tips there to digest. Yeah. Well, I don't get to see you all that often, so I had to jam it all in there. <laughs> you could come back and do the same one in five, five weeks or five months. Okay, after we forget everything, right? Because then we do it again. Well, you can't. Yeah. You can't adapt them all at once, you know? Right. Don't right. forget, you can go back and see it on on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Christy, how did you get that double A in your address line? Uh, how did I get? Oh, this this well, like right now when you're looking at my uh, at my page here, you don't see it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's you you see it when you scroll way down here. When you start to get towards the top, you see it again. Or I could have put my finger on the address bar up there at the very top. Now on some people's, it's gonna be way at the very bottom because you, your Safari might be set up that way. My Safari is set with the, um, with the address bar at the top, but you see it, it all disappears as I scroll up, right? So if I wanted to quickly get those double A's, I can, I can touch, you see my name across the top, christianvoice.com. When I touch that, there's my A's. And I, can, I can either show the reader or, or hide the reader. Okay, thanks. Christian, yeah, no. Christian, I've got one for you. Okay. It's uh, about the elephant in the room. Uh oh. How did you get your phone image to appear on your on the screen with the rest of your presentation? Yeah, that's kind of cool, huh? Did you like that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, this is something that's sort of new to me. I've been using it for maybe I don't know six months. It's there's a, an app called Ecam, so E C A M M, Ecam Live actually is what it's called. They have, I believe, they have a trial version, and basically, what you get to do is you get a canvas, and you can you can uh, assemble different parts into the screen that you want to show. So here, I'm showing a keynote presentation, a at my iPhone and me in sort of one canvas which is and then i'm sharing that you can do other interesting things like if let's say you don't want to show the phone you just want to go back to your keynote slides i can do this and it just quickly switches to that if i wanted to, to look at um say safari if i had safari going um i think i don't but let's let's see if i've got uh i'll just put a safari window up so there's safari so i can quickly switch between these different things. Um, it's, you know, here's if you just wanted me. Okay, just one. So I can I can move these things around and set up these these sort of canned uh, uh, scenes, they call them, and they're easy to switch. So 
I should have set up a sideways phone one. I forgot, but um, hopefully you got your money's worth. So anyway, eCam. eCam is really cool, and this is what the big boys use. I I am not the I'm not like an original gangster on this. I didn't. I'm kind of late to this party, but it is really cool. So I think you'd like this. Question. I have this Nancy. I have a question. You use Siri many times in this presentation without saying a hey, Siri. Yeah. Uh, why did you keep Siri turned on? Well, because when I didn't say hey Siri, I was pressing the button on the side and holding it. Okay. So if, it, if you're pressing the side button, uh, you don't need to say hey Siri. Watch, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything. Watch the screen. You'll see you'll see the uh, the Siri thing show up. Here I go. There you see that little yeah. throbber at the bottom. That's because I'm holding, I'm pressing in the side button with my thumb here on the right. But so Nancy, you have to turn that on in settings. Um, if you look in the chat window, um, uh, Don pointed that out to me. You have to go in and make sure that Siri is accessible by a push button. It's, let's let's do it. Let's, let's. I didn't have it turned on, so I couldn't do it. But, but now I do. Siri I just push it Siri. momentarily instead of holding it. Well, I like to hold it because uh, if you keep it in, she'll listen to you until you let go. So sometimes if you if you just press it and she starts listening and you, you know, you come up for error, if you're someone like me where you sort of take a Got little pause, she'll stop listening and she'll jump. Absolutely. And, yeah. So this way, it's kind of like the walkie-talkie where you hold it until you're done talking, you let go. It um, it like it works better, so I, I like it that way. Most of the time, it works fine to just press it until she kicks in and let go. But why not be more secure? You're already holding it in your hand. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's great. We have another question here, Barb. I'm ready. Questions? Yes. So I am in the car quite a bit, and I get text messages, and when I when it reads my text message and says, would you like to reply? And I say, yes, I will dictate a sentence. And if I want to do more than one sentence, I say period. And this is a Siri flaw. It writes P-E-R-I-O-D. Oh, wow. And yeah, it does do that. And it's been doing that all along. And it's the only time that it writes out the whole word. When I'm dictating like that, and only reply, in only in messages. Only in messages. Only to reply to a message. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. That's where you're not actually in messages, but they're just asking you, do you want to reply? And you say yes. Yeah. That's a bug. Hopefully they'll get that fixed. But I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know that they even know that that exists, but I found the flaw. <laughs> well, there there are ways to submit things to Apple. Um, I, I forgot what the website is, but there's 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 ways. So they I don't know what they they don't they don't follow up with you, but you know I think this stuff makes a difference. So do it. Do a yeah, you definitely thing. you definitely want to report it to the accessibility uh, part of Apple. I think if you start with support.apple.com, you'll get there. Yeah. Song, I fought the flaw and the flaw one. <laughs> yeah. I fought the, the flaw and the flaw one. All right, what else we got? Anything else? Okay, can I, do, do, hey, do I have, do I have like two more minutes? Anybody? Do I have, to, can I, can I give you two more minutes? Sure. Sure. Can you tell us exactly what that eCam app is so we can find it in the app store? Is it E dash cam? E C A M M. Uh, I believe it's called eCam Live. And uh, you may just find it on on the a website. Um, I did I don't remember if I bought it that way or not. Let me just take a look. Uh, let's just go. Yeah, it's, yeah, ecam.com. E Go to ecamm.com. I'm going to, um, I'll just show you here just real quick. There, ecam.com. 
and I'm going to switch to Safari with my little thing that I said I could do. Uh, there, okay, so this is Ecamm. You can, the address up there, it's tiny, but it says ecamm.com, uh, okay? And you can download it for free and it, you've gotta be on uh, 10.14 or newer. That shouldn't be any problem for us. Okay, so now I just wanna show you one more thing with um, the control center. Since we're so keen on the control center today, let me show my phone. Um, do, 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 do. Me the phone, me the phone, me the phone. It'd be nice if I was better at this, but here we go. We'll just do it like this. Okay, so in the control center for the uh, for the phone, you know, we, we pull down all the time and we get this. Okay, here's our control center. This is great. Well, and we use, I'm sure you, you use the flashlight like this, you, the, down at the bottom right there, flashlight, it's on. And I'm gonna aim this at the camera. You can see how bright this is. Sometimes you need a flashlight, but you don't need it to be a searchlight. You need it just a little bit so you can read the menu at the restaurant. So you don't need to, to turn on this, this you know, 100 megawatt light where everyone turns around and says, look at, the, look at these people that can't see. So we're gonna do like this. We're gonna to, we're gonna to touch this and we're gonna hold it. And you see it's not on yet. I'm still aiming it at the camera, but see now I go up, gonna get brighter, brighter, brighter. Okay, so you can pick, you can pick the um, the brightness you want. And this this might be nice for in the restaurants. So um, there's a lot of these things that are touch them and hold them. So let's look at say the brightness of the screen. If I touch and I hold it, I can, I can do very fine control for my screen about how bright and dim I want it. Plus I get extra options down at the bottom. I could quickly go into uh, dark mode like this or not. Um, I could go to night shift where it's, you know, it's kind of orangey. So lots of things where you touch them and hold them, something happens. Here's another one that where you can touch and hold. You see the clock down there. A lot of people are going to are going to forget to to tell their timer. You know, they forget to ask Siri to do it. They're going to come in here. If I touch this and hold it, okay. Whoops, I'll do this again. I'm going to I'll try that again. I'm going to touch it and hold it, and I get uh, I get nothing. What did I get here? Oh, well, bad example. Let's try a different one. Um, I think actually that's that's good. I wanted to have. My, uh, my you can do the magnifier one. Oh, the magnifier one. Let's do that. Let's do that real quick. So the magnifier is this thing with a plus at the bottom left. That one lets me lets me look at something like say, here's my uh, my iPhone or my my AirPods case, and if I have trouble, well, it's so dark in here. I'm gonna turn on the lights. Let's turn on. Uh, here, I get some. Now I can look. I can see. That's a bad example, but in real life, like here's here's some notes that I'm trying to write. I can here's a here's a keyboard. Let's see if I can. You can see I can get really way down there. I get very close, and when you when you take your picture with the little plus, I can then look at the pictures. And these are I took five pictures here. Um, you can see I was taking pictures of a the bottom of a airport to see the serial number. Okay, I can zoom in with this slider. So this is better than doing it with just the camera. You take you take the picture with this magnifier, and then you can um, you can zoom in on it later after the fact. So that's what I did here. So let's look at uh, see if I have some other pictures here. I'll do this again. That's great for reading menus that you can't yeah. see that are way back. There you go, and it's also great for those those tiny little things. You know, you, the serial number on your Mac, if it's if it's not, um, if you can't find it in the under the Apple menu, you can older stuff. You can find the serial numbers either on the on the back or on the bottom. So that's nice. Back of an iPad, that kind of thing. Okay, that I think is is it. But uh, use the control panel and use Siri, and everything's gonna be great. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Um, 
And we, we do need to wrap things up as the Cookie Joe's closes in 10 minutes. So they'd appreciate this to be out the door soon afterwards. Um, there's a great presentation, always with many new ideas and presentation, always with many new ideas and Unless anybody has any further questions, anybody has close off recording lobby and wrap up the meeting, close off recording lobby.